Rob Kendall speaking with Brian Woodard, the head coach of the Plainfield Quakers. Coach, how's it going? Doing very good, Rob, and yourself? I'm doing great. What a way to close out the season. A phenomenal win at Martinsville on Friday night. Man, you got to be really pleased with the way your team played. Well, I was hoping when we were talking last weekend that uh, when we decided to do the, you know, do this show uh, in a, you know, in advance of getting ready for the the playoffs, that it would be a, it would be a good thing, a positive thing, you know, a lot of a good stuff to talk about, and and uh, yeah, it was, and you know, not to, <clears throat> not to use any coach speak or to, to make it it um, something lesser than it was. It it, it was huge. I mean. Uh, Martinsville was a really good team. Uh, talked, you know, about the gauntlet of, of things we were going to run. I really had hoped that maybe we could find a way to get a two and two split the last month of our season. Um, you know, wasn't looking that way. Uh, you know, Martinsville being who they were, I, I, I liked our matchups. I thought we had really good game plans, um, you know, in place from our coaching staff. So, um, yeah, just just so happy, uh, so happy for our kids, you know, very proud of them and, and the effort that they gave on Friday and obviously the execution, you know, I mean, our teams always show up and play hard, but sometimes playing hard just isn't good enough. You got to go out and execute the game plan. And they did. So, um, you know, that's what, that's what can happen. So. Do you look at your team? I mean, you basically had your full strength team for probably the final six weeks of the season. You finished four and two. Do you look at it like, Hey, we're a four and two football team, or is that a stupid question? No, that's not a dumb question or anything. I mean, I, I, I think, I think it's a, it's a trap to be honest with you. I mean, I talked to our kids about that on Saturday, and I talked to our coaching staff about it. That the trap that that we can be in is to buy into that and say, well, hey, we're, you know, we're a better team than than our record indicates. Maybe we are, maybe we aren't. Okay, but it doesn't matter at this point, right? Well, we would if if we would have had these guys, then this would have been the outcome, but we didn't. So uh, that to me, the trap is not making any excuses for what happened. But the, the point of growth is, can we learn from it? Right. And and I think if we do that, uh, I, I like I like our chances, you know, headed into the sectional. Um, but, yeah, it's are, are we a better team than we are, you know, week nine than we were week one? And, and a very short answer. Yes, we are. Yeah. Do you look at it as, hey, we had two great games against good teams in the terms of Decatur Central and Martinsville, and we had two games against Whiteland and the game against Franklin where eh, we didn't play so good. Do you do you have an idea why that was what the difference was? Because they're all pretty good teams, but it just seemed like the teams played markedly different in those four games. Yeah, that's a great question. Um you know, I, I thought I thought we matched up well with with Franklin, you know, to, to go back, um, you know, to that <clears throat> to that game. But, you know, we didn't handle success very well. We had just come off, you know, a really, really great, you know, great win. Um, you know, the previous week uh, we got off the bus flat. Um, I, our kids played in that game like they were expecting something positive to happen. And, and when it didn't, it, it was too late. Um, and, and in addition to Franklin being really good. I mean, that's, you know, it's a combination of a couple things. Whiteland comes in here and just flat kicked our butt up front. I mean, it wasn't a good matchup for us. I thought we would have played better on both sides of the ball up front. We didn't. They did, you know, end of, end of story. So, you know, sometimes it can be a, a mixture of different things. And, and, you know, always important to keep in mind, you know, you're dealing with, you know, 15 to 18-year-olds, you know. And, I mean, we just weren't ready to play on, you know, at, at Franklin. And, you know, people, parents, whomever it is, say, well, coach, that's your job to get them ready. Is it? Is it, though? You know, I mean, that's like people talking about Frank Reich's job to get the Colts ready to play. No, it's not. And it's not my job. If, if your kid is looking for a pep talk from me, I mean, I'm going to give him one. But if that's if that's going to be the difference between us winning and losing, I got, I got bad news for you. You're in trouble, man. I mean, because, you know, midway through the third quarter when it's, you know, when it's, you know, backs against the wall, I'm guessing you're probably not reflecting back to 645. When, oh, yeah, I remember the great pep talk that Coach Woodard gave. Man, that's baloney. That's baloney. You know, so um, our kids uh, got off the bus ready this this past Friday night. And, and that's and, and that was awesome. I mean, you can you know, that that's a tangible thing. So I'm not trying to be, you know, mean spirited. I'm just trying to make the point that, you know, sometimes uh, teams are, are better prepared than others mentally. <clears throat> and and that's something I just didn't think we were in some of those games. You know, this is why over the past 15 years, this has been the best show in the history of ever because of just <laughs> stuff like that, right? Like, and a big part of it is people grow up watching movies and it's some great inspirational speech or, you know, win one for the Gipper or whatever. 
and the team storms the you know the Bastille in the second half and wins the game. That's not really how it works, is it? No, I mean it's not. And and I mean, listen, I, I'm an emotional coach, be it good, bad, or indifferent. So it's not like I'm you know, you know, uh, vanilla ice cream before the game. I mean, I'm I'm excited. I mean, I I love the job that I get to do, and 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 I'm you know Friday nights come and the lights are on. I mean, I, there, there's a little, still a little part of me that, that wants to go run out there and, and play again. And some of that gets channeled through how I talk to our players. So, um, it, it, you know, that is an important part to me. You know, I, I, I do feel like there's an emotional, hey, let's, let's get ready to go play this game. Our team, in this case, we play really well when something positive happens early. That, that is a known commodity about this team. So if there's something I can say or do to help us you know, come out of the gate a little bit better. I'm happy to do that. But, you know, the, the very simple point is when, when it comes time to win football games or to win the moment in a football game, it's about execution. And it's about taking the coaching that you received during the week, taking the game plan, all the preparation and going and putting that into play. And then sometimes they're just better than you are. I mean, if they've got a guy that just you know, makes plays as bigger, stronger, faster, all the game planning, all the emotion in the world isn't going to make a, you know, make a difference. When you look at Friday night's game, because you beat Martinsville, Martinsville beats Whiteland. You guys got beat by Whiteland. Do you like watch film and go, what, you know, to quote, was it Vince Lombardi? What in the world's going on out here? Like, I mean, are you able to decipher why, how that all works? Or is that just like a fool's errand? No, I mean, that's, I, I think there are certain years and this is, one of them, which is kind of really cool thing about the Mid-State Conference is, um, I mean, it, it's crazy, you know, watching, you know, getting ready to play, um, you know, Whiteland, watching what, you know, Martinsville did and, and, and watching those guys and then, you know, playing them on, on Friday night. I mean, it's just it, it's I don't know if it's matchups. I don't know if it's just the momentum of the game, um, but but it is very interesting to see who beat whom. You know, sometimes injuries will play a, a factor in that, you know, for sure. I mean, if certain teams don't have their guys for if a, a stretch of the game or maybe the entire game, I think that factors in. I, I know, you know, like in the case of Decatur Central, they've lost several key players um, over the course of the season. That's going to make a big difference. So, um, no, as coaches, we, we do we do compare scores. You know, we look at it and, and look at the film and try to figure out, how in the world did they beat this team or how in the world? I'm sure there's a lot of mid-state you know, conference coaches that probably woke up on Saturday morning and said, how in the holy hell did Plainfield beat Martinsville? And you know what? Good for them. I'm, and I'm glad they were thinking that because we were excited for it. All right. So before we take a look ahead to ne- not this Friday, but next Friday's game, I, this again may be the most ridiculous question of ever, but I'm watching, you know, I'm listening to you guys on Friday and I'm watching – the Brownsburg uh, Hamilton Southeastern game. Brownsburg's obviously undefeated. They lose, uh, you know, on a blocked kick at the end. Their quarterback's injured. Don't know what his time frame for return is. Is it a weird question to say that you guys at four and five might theoretically have more momentum or feel better about yourself than a team who just a week ago was ranked number one and finishes the regular season eight and one? Is it is that a possibility? Yeah, I think so. I mean, momentum's real, you know, talked about, you know, emotion and, you know, maybe, you know, pep talks and those kind of things where that falls, you know, again, don't know, but I mean, momentum is, is a real thing. And it also is real when it comes to having your best players available to you. I think that there's, there's a connection there. You know, I've been in, unfortunately been in a lot of situations where you lose key players and your guys go out and they play hard and they do their very best, but you you just there's just something missing. You can't put your finger on it. Um, you know, in the case of, of, of a Brownsburg team, I'm I'm sure they're 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 scratching their heads a little bit, but you know they've got a couple. You know they've got time. You know they've got time to rebuild some of that momentum to recapture. Hey, look guys, we're still a really really good football team. Uh, you know, for us, it's you know keeping our our, our foot on the gas and. Learning, I really stress this to our kids this weekend of learning from our journey and not repeating the same daggone mistake we made after the Decatur Central game and, and playing like dog crap at Franklin. You know, so um, I'm not trying to squash their spirits. I'm trying to, hey, let's let's remember what it's like uh, and, and build from that. So, yeah, I mean, I 
you know, it's they have talked about the NFL, you know, being a, a one week at a time league and those kind of things. I don't you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not an NFL coach. So I don't know. I've never been there. But, you know, for me, it, it really is. It's a one week at a time situation for us. So build on what we did well in Martinsville, learn from the journey we had and then use all those things as we get ready for sectionals. Does an NFL coach know any more about like actual football than you? I'm not talking about like Andy Reid. I'm talking about like some guy who is, let's say the. I mean, you coach tight ends, the tight ends coach for the right. Colts. Does he actually know any more about football than a well-versed high school coach? Um, you know, that's a really good question. I don't. I guess it would probably depend a little bit upon his his background. I I, I would say this. Um, in terms of managing day-to-day operations and those those kind of things, um, the pure art of coaching, uh, I'll take a high school coach. And I'm not that's not I'm just not talking about me. I'm talking like some of the elite high school coaches, and I'm not including myself in that category. But some of the really really good ones that have coached a lot, coordinated different things. I'm not just talking about coordinating offense or defense. I'm talking about like been around the game and done a lot of things. Um, I think I think high school coaches are incredibly underrated um, for for all the things that they have to do. Um, you know, the, the NFL guys obviously operate on a completely different level, but it's all relative. You know, they're coaching the most elite athletes in the world. They're, they're playing against the most elite athletes in the world. But, um, you know, it, it, a quick side note to that, you know, Zane Fakes, one of our former players, you know, Zane is an assistant strength and conditioning coach for the Indianapolis Colts. And, um, you know, talk to don't talk to Zane a lot. You know, he's got a, a lot on his plate. Um, but, you know, he he has expressed to me before that, you know, there there are the attitudes and the mindsets of, of professional athletes that are no different than the 16 or 17 year olds that, that that I coach. So, you know, I think if you can coach him at the high school level, you could certainly do it uh, at the upper levels. Let's thank the sponsors who make all the Plainfield uh, football broadcast possible. CCB Contracting, Geodis, Ganell Financial, Julia Berberich, Remax, Centerstone, Plainfield, Kyle Burnfield, Mortgage Lender at Flagstar Bank, Team Turley, Fairway Mortgage, Bailey and Wood Financial Group, African Plum Home, My IT Indy and MyITND.com, I-70 Record Service and Garage, BGW Construction LLC, Beacon Sign Company, Jeff Brown Photography, Karen Alexander Photography, and Whitlow's Towing. All right, let's look ahead to Friday night, uh, next Friday night, on the road at Harrison, keeping in line, Coach, with your uh, your track record over the years of making us go as far as possible and oftentimes playing the <laughs> hardest team possible in round one of the sectionals. What does Lafayette Harrison bring to the table? Well, I mean, I you know, it, they're, the, they're the same group that they were, you know, week two. Um, you know, and I, I've not – I've not – uh, watched a lot of their film, their recent film. Um, so, you know, I'm not, not in a great position to, to give you a, a great answer to that question. Um, but the little bit that I have seen, they're, they're healthy. They're not missing anybody that, that they, you know, had week, week two. I don't think they, they've got, gotten any new or introduced any new players, right. That maybe, you know, maybe weren't starring for them. So, I mean, they're a very good football team. Uh, you know, whatever they're ranked in, in 5A, 4 or 5, whatever it is, I'm not sure. I mean, they, they, they've they earned that ranking. Uh, you know, people will say, well, they, they don't play a very good schedule. Okay, maybe they don't. But you know what? They, they've absolutely crushed the teams that they have played. So um, driving up there presents a challenge, but we've been there before. So, you know, so, you know, advantage us, or at least maybe not advantage, but push to us. So um, they're very well coached. You know, Terry Peebles is, is, is really good. Uh, and you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a fight, man. I mean, that's what it is. This is a fight. It's a fight to stay a football family, uh, for as long as we can. And that's, that's exactly how I'm approaching it. Is the advantage you guys in the sense of there's several players who are very, very, uh, involved and very, very important to your team that were not out there the last time mm-hmm. you guys played. So you've seen their best. Yeah. They maybe haven't seen your best. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, we we're I'm looking forward to being as healthy as we can get, um, you know, or get to right when we take the field on Friday, the, the 28th. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned health and we didn't have some of those guys. Absolutely looking forward to having those guys back. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the bigger challenge for me, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, just getting to Friday, like, OK, we've got we've got a, a different kind of week this week where we won't practice every day this week. 
Um, and, but just getting to the 28th as healthy as we can possibly get to, you know, there, there's a challenge in that as well. So, you know, we want to, we want to be at a hundred percent on that Friday night. When you make that sort of trip on a Friday and you've made the trip before, <laughs> is it like the same thing? Because there is some se- sense of familiarity that's good for kids. And if they're playing yeah. in a building they've played before and we made this bus trip before, do you try to keep all of that the same? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, the not the weird thing, but like, you know, I really tried to do a good job. We were a little late getting there in week two, which which changed this for me. But I was really trying to think ahead like, hey, this is a sectional opponent. What if we have to come back here? So, I, you know, I tried to walk the field as much as I could. I tried to get a feel for our surroundings as much as I could in a short amount of time um, that I had just just for that. Uh, like for, for one thing, and this will sound really dumb to people, but you know, their locker room is, is, is old. It's bigger. There's, there's enough space, but it's, it's cluttered. They had no place to sit. Well, we'll be bringing 30 folding chairs, you know, for, for this sectional game. I mean, again, sounds like a dumb thing, but you know, maybe a guy needs to, you know, needs to sit down on halftime, you know, or or, little things like that. So, you know, we, when we came in there, there were all kinds of people, our buses had to back down. We're going to have to try to build in an extra 10 minutes just for our buses to back down to the locker room. I mean, again, never would know that unless we've been there before. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm approaching it from that, that standpoint that, you know, a lot of those little things we'll, we'll we've accounted for, we'll have plans for uh, that way our kids can get off the bus and just get ready to play. Closing in on a hundred wins. We've been talking about this for 10 years on this show and you said it doesn't matter. So I'll take your word on that, but, is it on your mind or has it been on your mind to say, look, man, I've had won all these games and I've had a lot of really good teams. And sometimes the injury bug has hit mm-hmm. us or we ran to that buzzsaw for years and years. It was, you know, Ron Colley and then Decatur central. Does the sectional evading you? Is that on your mind or are all these games just kind of the same? Oh, I, I mean, not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm gonna, I'm not going to use a bad word there. I'm not going to give you a fake answer. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of this program and I'm proud of the coaches that have been with me uh, before and, you know, proud of these guys. Now I'm proud of, I'm proud of so many players that uh, didn't have the opportunity um, to win a sectional. And, and that's, I'm not, that's not playing like the victim card, like uh, we, something was taken from us and, or nothing like that. And it's not about me, but I, we, we, um, in many years, we we had the opportunity to do it, um, and for whatever reason, whether it was something that happened to us or whether it was some really, really, really good opponents, um, it, it didn't happen. And uh, I want this as as much as I've ever wanted anything before. Not so it's not for me, but for our program because I feel like um, there's we've been too good for too long to be without a sectional. And that's, that's the truth. And um, whether that happens or not this year, um, that's not going to be a legacy type thing. It's just, this is this year. And this is our best year because it's this year. It's kind of like hey, our, our toughest game is our next game. Well, our best chance to win a sectional is this year because this is the year that we have. And I, and I asked it from a standpoint of not that you you don't don't want to win, but you see right. athletes a lot of the times where it's like, you know, I think of a guy, you know, I watch a lot of golf. So like Freddie Couples to me is an example of this phenomenal player, clearly wanted to win, was always trying as hard as he could, but he never looked like it bothered him. And it was like there were a couple majors that he kind of goofed away and it was like just yeah. the next day he was out like, OK, I tried as hard as I could you know, I, I didn't win. It's onto the next thing and it's good to be alive sort of deal. So everybody handles these sort of things differently. Yeah. And that's just kind of, I was curious how much that stays on your mind. Yeah, no, I think, it, I think it's, it's, it's interesting, especially, you know, from the professional sports standpoint, cause I think of the same thing. I'm like, you know, how, how badly does it hurt those guys? Hey, you know, coach just got fired. Well, he's got the $9 million buyout clause. How much does that bother him? Like if you're a competitor, it doesn't matter. 9 million or $9. You're, you're pissed because you got fired and you didn't get the job done. You know, if you're a competitor and whatever a a, a level it is, you know, the money at some point in time, isn't a factor. Um, So that, that's very interesting. You know, I, I know looking back, I was, I was talking with, um, you know, someone Saturday may have been our athletic director, Mr. Rodkey. We were just looking back, talking about sectionals of of years gone by. And, um, you know, we've not had any, we've not had any, uh, any cakewalks just hadn't been, you know, and that's part of it. And there's been plenty of teams in in central Indiana that haven't had cakewalks that have found a way to get it done. Um, It's our time to find a way to get it done. That's, that's how, that's, that's what I believe. 
Let's again thank the sponsors who have made it possible all year long for us to bring you Plainfield football, CCB Contracting, Geodisc, Gunnell Financial, Julia Burbridge of Remax Centerstone, Plainfield, Kyle Burnfield, Mortgage Lender at Flagstar Bank, Team Turley, Fairway Mortgage, Bailey and Wood Financial Group, African Plum Home, My IT Indy at MyITIndy.com, I-70 Record Service and Garage, BGW Construction LLC, Beacon Sign Company, Jeff Brown Photography, Karen Alexander Photography, and Whitlow's Towing. All right, Coach, uh, we'll be off next week. No coaches show. This will cover the sectional preview. Of course, we'll have the broadcast. Cast Friday night, uh, the 28th at Lafayette Harrison. But let's close it as we always do. And in fact, it, you know, it's your show. I'll let you close it however you want to close it. But uh, <laughs> hopefully with somebody or someone's behind the scenes who make Plainfield football what it is. Yeah, well, I'm going to I'm going to close this one out on um, on, a, on a personal note. Uh, my my, you know, my, mom and dad have always been, you know, so supportive and uh, just wouldn't, you know, talk to our our, our players every nearly every Friday night, just asking them to pause for a moment and, you know, be, be reflective of the people that have helped them get to, you know, where they are, you know, because that, that Friday night, they wouldn't be there if it weren't for somebody that have, you know, <laughs> taken them to, you know, signed them up for football and gotten them to weights and, you know, done all those things. And, um, you know, for me, that's my folks. <clears throat> So thank you, mom and dad. I think that's awesome. And, you know, coach, uh, it's been such an honor to be, and we hope there's many, many more games left. Uh, yep. but it's been such an honor to be a part of this program with you all these, all these years and see all the highs and lows. And you've always handled it so awesome and, and so well. And, um, you know, I know we close pretty much every show with let's get a big win and we'll talk to you uh, on Monday, but I don't yeah. think we've ever meant it more than now. Nobody deserves this more than you to get mm -hmm. this sectional. So we're all cheering for you. Let's yeah. get a big win uh, a week yeah. from Friday and we'll talk to you then on Monday. Awesome, Rob. Thanks so much, buddy.